Today, we're making art in the galleries, and we're making a work of art inspired by our current exhibition, Ally with Power. Let's go. Hello, friends. My name is Angela. I'm a visual artist and teaching artist at Perez Art Museum, Miami. Today, we're gonna create a work of art inspired by South African artist, Nicholas Schlobo. This is Schlaba Amatlala, or To Analyze, by artist Nicholas Schlobo. At the end of the apartheid system in South Africa in 1994, Nicholas Schlobo, as well as other artists of his generation, became more focused on the idea of national pride and freedom. Using kneading, weaving, and sewing techniques, he creates abstract compositions that are focused on the idea of identity, masculinity and femininity, as well as cultural identity in South Africa. This piece in particular focuses on the idea of the body and healing. And we're seeing that he's using materials or juxtaposing these materials that may not necessarily be something that we would usually put together, such as buttons, ribbons, but also leather, seeing the contrast of the texture to create a very dynamic abstract composition. The materials I'm using today are a piece of fabric. In my case, I have a piece of canvas, but you can use just about any fabric that you may have at home. It can be a solid color or print, needles, yarn, a pencil, a scissor, some beads. It can be wooden or plastic beads a piece of plastic, and a small piece of burlap that I painted in gold. Now, this activity, since it's inspired by the work of Nicolas Schlobo, and as you saw, he uses a lot of disparate materials, found objects, textiles, and different sewing techniques. Um, I have a few samples that I want to show you so that you can see how complex the work can become or how simple you can make it. That is all up to you. And uh, I created a couple of projects earlier using things that I had at home. Like um, I have a piece of an old dress that I had, a piece of plastic from a plastic bag that I had. I try to recycle as much as I can, but sometimes I do find them at home and I think this is a great way to use them rather than throwing them away. And then you can actually see a piece of uh, a sponge that I used to make art. Uh, so this is a, a fairly complex composition. I always think about in the beginning how balanced the composition is, the weight of the items that I'm using just to make sure that it's harmonious, dynamic, and it has all of those elements that we think about when we think about design and making art. Um, right here, this is one of my samples. And then you can see another one that's a lot smaller. And again, just using similar items, but thinking about the compositions in a different way. Now, what I have decided to do for this project in particular, the one I'm going to be working on right now, is this composition. So you can see that I incorporated all of the items that I talked about a little bit earlier, and I'm gonna go ahead and get started. The first thing that I do is I think about how everything is going to look together, and then I make changes as I go, or just to make sure that, again, I have a really balanced composition. So I have my piece of fabric and the first thing that I'm going to work on is going to be where I'm going to be placing my plastic and then also where I'm going to be placing my burlap piece because I think they are the base and they're also going to be um, really the focal point of the composition. So I'm just going to crumple this up a little bit. Um, I've prepared some of the needles that would that's going to make it easier for me to just go ahead and grab as I go. So this is the first color. I'm going to be using orange. Um, and I'm just going to crumple up. I'm not going to be too precious about it. Just crumple up and start sewing it in. And one of the things that we know about Nicolas Schlobo is that he uses techniques that are particular to South Africa, which is where he's from. So later on, I'm gonna be using a technique that I used to use as a child. 
which is particular to Honduras, which is where I'm from. So I'm gonna just go ahead and start sewing the plastic in here. And one of the things that I also like to do when I'm sewing is that I like to look to the back to make sure that it's nice and as clean as I can make it. Plastic might be a little bit hard to for the needle to get through. So you just kind of push through and keep going. And I want to make sure that the fabric is always nice and straight. Okay. And this stitching that I'm doing with the plastic doesn't have to be in any particular way or organized in any particular way. I'm just trying to attach the plastic to the canvas. Maybe create a nice, interesting shape as I go. Always making sure that I'm pulling the yarn all the way through. Okay, so maybe I want something that is more organic, even though I'm using plastic. If, if it gets stuck, I kind of try to go slower just to make sure that I don't get a knot and because that will make it a little bit harder for me to handle the yarn. Okay, so I have this really fun shape that I have created with this plastic that otherwise would have been thrown away. I'm now using it in a work of art that I know I'm gonna keep for a very long time. You can also use paper, you can use fabric. All of these materials can be substituted for something that you may have at home already. Okay, so I have got the beginning of my composition. I'm going to make a knot here in the back. And keep going. Okay, here we go. Now I'm going to go on to the second item that I'm going to add, and that is going to be my piece of burlap, which I have caught in a sort of geometrical shape, I guess, somewhat geometrical shape. And then I, I painted it over with gold paint, which you can do if you have any at home, but you can also leave it as it is. This is just to add a layer and texture to the project, to the composition. Uh, I'm going to use green to attach my um, burlap. You could also use glue. You could use some Munch Podge to secure it first. That might be easier. Now I'm going to start attaching the um, burlap using this really, really nice green yarn. And I love the contrast between the softness of the yarn and then the roughness of the burlap. I think that that's a really nice contrast and that's one of the things that we're looking for and when we're creating works of art where we pick disparate objects and place them together. So I'm going to go all around it, making sure that I am securing it very nicely. And for this, you can 
use almost any kind of mesh that you have. It can even be a different fabric. So for example, if you have a solid color fabric like I have, you can use a fabric that has a print, just something that is contrasting where the eye can be distracted by the different prints and patterns that you may have. So you can definitely be creative with the materials that you choose and just finding things that you have at home that you know you can use for this project. And I'm always looking to the back to make sure that I don't have any extra yarn left in the back as well. This is a very relaxing activity, not just to watch, but to do. And it's something that you can do for a long period of time. So if you are looking for something to relax, just something that you want to do while you're doing something else. Um, I think that this sewing and knitting are just perfect examples of activities that you can do to just pass the time or spend time together with friends and make a project together. I have to tell, I have to tell you how to relaxing it is to be working with this type of materials, sewing in the galleries. All right, so now that I am done with the framing of this burlap piece, I'm gonna add um, some beads to it, uh, yet another layer. That's one of the things that I love the most about Nicolas Schlobo's work is that they're layers and, and there's, it, they're very dynamic composition using as many materials, all meaningful to him, but as many materials as he can. Okay, so I'm going to add just a line of beads here I'm gonna do orange, okay, over here. You could also use buttons instead of beads. Anything that you can get a needle through, you can use. But if you don't have beads available, the sky is the limit with all the materials that you can use for this project. Okay. I'm gonna leave it at this one on orange. So I started with orange and then with orange. Okay, great. Okay, so this is done. And you can see here, I left a little bit of the yarn, which I was trying not to do, but that's okay, it happens. And so what I am gonna do though, because I don't want to leave that long string just hanging there in the back. I'm going to cut it and create a knot, okay? Because even though this is the back of the project, I still want it to be as clean as possible. Okay. Okay, here we go. Now, 
I want to add just a very simple design. So I've got my pencil here and I'm going to do a bit of a wiggly line here. I'm going to draw it first. That's going to add some energy to the piece. So movement. Okay. No, I have it here already. Okay. And for this technique, I'm going to use a technique that I used to do as a child when I used to embroider at school in Honduras. And it's called the chain. And it's probably the most complicated I've done so far, but it looks really nice. And it does take some time, but I think it's a nice addition to, to the composition. Right? So you are seeing just a sample of a different kind of techniques that you can do. I'm going to go ahead and leave this one be for now and move on to another part of the composition because I want this to be balanced. If I don't do anything at the bottom, then I feel like I'm missing something here. So I'm going to just go ahead and do another line. It's going to be just across this really neat design pattern like line. And I'm gonna use a darker color, a gray. I'm also thinking about the colors that I'm using as well, making sure that they all make for a nice harmonious composition. Okay, I'm using a slightly different stitch here, stitching technique. This one is a lot easier. like when I'm doing works that include sewing, kneading, anything of the sort, I'm engaging my entire upper body. I'm using my torso, my arms, everything to create this composition. Okay, so you're seeing a sample of the stitching and there's so many different stitchings that you can do. And then now I'm going to show you a completed work. So you can see all of the same elements already finished and ready to hang. So this is the piece that I finished earlier. And you're saying the nice design, the nice wiggly design, my pattern that I completed here. And it just makes for a really nice work of art that you can create in your own time, wherever you like. I can imagine somebody being on the bus, at home, in school, just taking some time to be creative and do something fun. I would love to see your projects. Please make sure to use hashtag PamDIY to share your works with the world.